Okay everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel today. We're back on GT Sport and we're back with the FIA manufacturers round number three of the exhibition season driving the Group 4 cars. I'm in obviously the Porsche Cayman for this round driving at the Dragon Trail track, the seaside version. You can see there starting from P1 is myself. Did an okay qualifying lap. I did actually expect to be a bit faster than that in qualifying. I was down to low 44s, 44.0 in practice but didn't really get a good run in on the first sector which kind of messed up my um, main lap with the fresh tyres but luckily good enough for pole it looks like a few other people messed their laps up as well so reasonably happy with that pole position and in the best place to start for the very um, aggressive strategy that I was going to be I say aggressive but it was pretty much all, I don't think a lot of people have thought of running this strategy I don't think anyone else in this race ran the same strategy as me I'm not 100% sure though um, I may be wrong but when I am um, was doing testing for this round i did mention in the video for the track guide that i was going to run a strategy that was very um unusual it's probably not going to be thought about i didn't want to tell people on the on the um track guide video purely because i didn't want anyone else doing the same strategy in my race i would be racing because obviously i want the best result for myself in these fia races so i was going to do the super soft tires with a no stop strategy I had tested this strategy and as crazy as it sounds they give up so they give so much grip for the first four or five laps it you're you're gonna be at the maximum um, speed you can be for the first five laps you know if you do it with the soft tires you'd be behind by about four or five seconds or something like that but because these tires were so good for the first four or five laps I went for this strategy and the drop off on them even though they drop off you're still not far off what you'd be with the other tires because they're that much faster in, in general the tires i think they i don't know whether it's the tire physics or whether it's this i think a lot of it is the track because it's not a massive um tire color this track so if it was a lot of fast corners this strategy would not have worked but because this track is a lot of straight um i, I was convinced i might be able to make this work but starting from pole you see annoyingly as the lights go out you see the revs it starts me as pretty much at the end of first gear, there's no way I can get it second gear quick enough, which makes it hit the limiter, which gives up first place. So first, my pole position basically wasn't pole position, it was nearly third position, as you can see. Oscar Ascent nearly makes a move down that inside, as I try and obviously break late to try and take the inside of P1, but managed to get away with that, and just about holding on to my P2 position off the start there. As a few cars got very close to the rear of my car. I think uh, V. Cristiano may have tapped me a little bit, but. I got away with that. The rear kind of nearly went on me, but I managed to save that and hold on to my P2 position, which is really important because I'm obviously running these super soft tyres, which are going to be fast for the first four, four or five laps. I do not want to be um, stuck behind that Scirocco. So straight away from the start, I needed to try and make sure I carry a lot of speed through the corners because the Scirocco is a very fast car down the straight, but I don't want to be caught behind it through the corners because in the corners, the, the Scirocco is not going to be as strong as the Cayman. So this is okay at this point, I would have rather have been in P1 obviously, but because the game started me at the limiter in first gear, it didn't go to second gear, it kind of messed up my start, which was a bit annoying because I think if I would have been able to go from the start without having to be defensive now, I could have built up a, a bit of a gap, or at least there uh, would have been a little bit further up the road, uh, just ahead of the NSX there. But now, at least I'm not um, dropped back and there's no damage on the car for a change, and we've, we, we're away and we can just concentrate on this race and try and hold off that Scirocco, that's the one thing I've got to do as well, so I'm going to have to drive a little bit defensive at the start of this race, which is going to lose me a bit of time on the first few laps, but you see going so aggressive on that last corner, trying to make sure that I carry a lot of speed down the straight, and ride on board now with V Cristiano in P3, picking up my slipstream, you can see I'm going to stay over to the left hand side because I do not want him getting um, passed on that inside, so going very defensive and making it clear that I was going defensive, He's on the outside, he's not going to challenge for that position, he looks like he's backing off and just going to try and maybe overtake going up the power section now towards the next one. As you can see he's having a little look, so again I'm going to go defensive to the right hand side, make sure that he's aware that I'm not going to let him just go past on that side and then back over to the racing line because he didn't manage to get side by side. And then this corner, I just have to throw it into this corner and try and carry a lot of speed. You can see I carried a lot of speed into the entry and managed to hold it on the exit. And again, managing to hold him off so we can't make a move. The longer I can do this, the more um, trouble he's going to have to get past because the Scirocco isn't going to be able to carry as much speed through um, these type of corners as I can in the Cayman. He's going to start getting a lot of up the steer. And you can see, again, he's not really close enough to make any sort of move. I've managed to increase that gap 
through them really fast corners and give myself that vital few attempts so he can't make a move into this right hand corner which is another overtaking opportunity on this track as you can see there Oscar is slim having a little look up the inside of uh, V Cristiano but not being it not really close enough to make that move had to back out of it decided better of that and stuck behind in the slip room and now I've really got to carry the speed through these really fast chicanes, taking 100% for its speed, not lifting at all, and trying to work my way up to the slipstream of the P1, because at the moment I've got no slipstream, and I really could do with that to defend against um, V Cristiano in that really fast short coach. So going on to the back straight again, we're going to see now v, v Cristiano takes a really aggressive line through there, but it doesn't give him the best exit speed. That gives myself some exit speed, but what it does give V Cristiano is a, close, it's a little bit closer to get the slipstream there because he carries the speed into the corner you see i've gone over to the right to try and break the slipstream then back over to the racing line and now going to follow the racing line into the first major braking zone having a little look now you can see he's not able to go for a move there v cristiano so that's good for myself now so i can actually concentrate on racing lines through the first sector which is important for myself now to start seeing if i can catch up p1 and get in that slipstream because obviously when i was defending i was losing a lot of time on certain corners and wasn't really be able to get close enough to P1 to get in the slipstream, but now I've got no um, car behind me to really worry about. You can see he's starting to drop off now. His tyres are starting to lose their grip. You know, front wheel drive cars, they, they, they had no chance of doing the strategy that I was on, but I think the NSX could have done the strategy that I was on, 100% could have done, because I, I, I tested that car, I've tested that car a lot, and the tyre wear is fairly good on it, so I was quite surprised. Um, I, I wasn't sure at this stage, to be honest, if any of the other drivers around me would be going on the same strategy it would be it was clear that they were on super soft tires a lot of these drivers around me let's p1 you can see starting to get a little bit closer to p1 now you can see i've got that gap down to 1.1 seconds so the speed was 100 percent there um so i think if i would have got myself into that turn one in the lead without the game you know making me start on the rev limiter i think i would have been able to hold on to p1 and possibly would have made it, you know, an effort to break the slipstream was would have been extremely hard because this track is probably one of you know, one of them tracks that is it's a slipstream track. You want to be in someone's slipstream because the gain is massive out of it. So it would have been fairly hard to really lose the slipstream. As you can see, it's nearly picking up the slipstream. We're, we're on the verge of getting that um, slipstream off P1. Very um, minor slipstream at this stage, picking up a little bit down the straight as we start lap four. And you can see I managed to go over the line there. On that lap, without any real slipstream, just maybe picking it up a bit on the back straight and going over the line with the fastest lap of the race. And that was lap three when the tyres are probably not in the best condition. So it shows the pace is there. We've got a gap to Oscar Ascent, who has managed to get past V Cristiano. But as we look back, you might see it in the distance there on the top right hand corner. Um, Oscar Ascent loses the rear on the curb, completely spun it, hits into the wall, and he's probably picked up damage there. So he's pretty much out this race now. So although that's not good for the race, it's better for myself because it's another car that I don't have to worry about with this very aggressive strategy that I'm running over here. Super soft tyres all the way to the finishing line. And one thing I knew was, obviously V Cristiano would not be going on that strategy. So and the way I'm pulling away from him now, you know, it, the gap is building up constantly because he's starting to struggle. I knew this was turning into a two race battle, you know, two car battle for the lead of this race and for the win. Um, it all depends on what strategy P1 is going to go on and how fast he could be if he does pit. It's going to be really close. Um, I really... When I was racing, I really had no idea. I, I at this stage, thought that he was going to be going on the same strategy as me, but I didn't know if many if many people would even try testing this strategy out. I tested it up to lap, I think it was lap 8, um, lap 8 or 9, and I could see that it was possible, so I didn't even bother doing the last lap. I just knew that as long as you've built up a gap, you just have to drive it to a set time every lap and just hope that you can heat, you know, keep hitting them sectors. And that's what I was driving, you know, you've got to drive each, each sector with the worn tyres. Um, rather than concentrating on going for an ultimate lap, you've just got to try and keep each sector not too slower than each lap. And it really is a, um, it's quite hard to do, but I did it on my practice run for the first eight or nine laps and found it not to be too bad. As you can see, still now, start a lap, um, the end of lap four, still in the 45s. So plenty of grip there. It wasn't the perfect lap. It could have been a bit better, but still driving reasonably well. It's now really getting in the slipstream of us, um, the Nissan, sorry, the Honda NSX in front of me. I'm picking up a slipstream, so you can see, managing to really make gains on this NSX. And I think if, if, if I could have gone on the strategy of changing tyres, I think it would have been a close battle. But the thing is with that, you know, when you're in a slipstream battle, 
the win is anyone's it's about who gets the slipstream right and i don't think i would have been able to break the slipstream off that nsx very easily he's clearly very fast I'm, i think i have more speed than him because you can see the way i'm gaining on him now um definitely got i think towards the end of the stint the Cayman was a bit better on the tyres. It looks like I'm able to gain a little bit. Um, it might just be the, the lines I'm taking because I'm trying to be a bit kinder on the tyres. So I'm not driving as aggressive on the middle, middle of the apex. I'm trying to carry a little less speed just so I don't push too much um, weight of the car to them front tyres. I want to try and preserve the front tyres because they're the tyres. The front left tyre is the tyre that's going to take the most wear on the strategy that I'm running. As again, you can see how close I'm getting to the NSX. Really picking up the I'm not going to battle him though. I'm just going to stay behind him because I know that I'm on a, you know, this no stop strategy. So at this point, I just want to stay behind him and see what he does on the end of lap five. If he pits, that's great for me because then I can just concentrate on my race all by myself with no one around me. No, you know, no risk of um, someone not pitting. This is another thing. I didn't know if other people would be on the harder tyres not pitting and trying that strategy out. As you can see, he goes in the pits there in the NSX and I did not. I stay out. So now it's going to be a case of i was hoping that a few other people would be going on this strategy of not pitting but on the harder tires and that he would come out behind a lot of traffic and that was the risk of doing the strategy on um, you know, the, the one-stop strategy as you can see a lot of cars going in the pits and this really did you know it shocked me to be honest you've got cars going in the pits on medium tires and soft tires and only one car has stayed out ahead of the nsx so that was a little bit worrying but when I saw the gap, it was quite good because I know I've got a 12 second lead and P3 isn't actually past that gap yet. So let's see what the gap is now as it's all about driving consistent, not driving too aggressive. You can, you'll can see that I'm taking a lot less speed into this corner now. You see down to 108, 107, trying not to make um, too much wear on that tire. I'm trying to be really cautious with my steering inputs, putting very minimal input into that steering angle just to keep the car smooth. It's not about trying to get this each lap as fast as possible now it's trying to make as little mistakes and being as smooth and as consistent as possible because i know that i've got over 12 seconds so if i can keep that over 12 seconds when we go over line that's four laps i've got over three seconds a lap to work with and as you can see at this point of the lap i'm only 1.3 seconds off my fastest lap so it it's looking okay at this stage it's going to be quite tense you know is he going to be able to catch me i really did not know it, it's pretty much anyone's race still you know it all depends how much faster he is on them fresh super soft tires to the finishing line as you can see p2 still behind me and um, behind me and it's not the nsx yet he still obviously not managed to get past the driver who didn't pit so the gap is down up to 13 seconds to p2 it'll be interesting to see when he actually passed the p2 as you can see there he's just managed to get past as we go over the finishing line and the gap is about 12.8 12.9 seconds so I've got four laps and 13 seconds to work with and this was great because that lap I just did then was only 2.3 seconds off my fastest lap so what I was going to try and what I was trying to do was just try and keep the sectors consistent you can see if I go through the first sector just trying to keep it smooth keep it to a set delta of just trying to lose a little bit extra each sector as long as I don't lose a massive chunk and make a massive error this strategy might actually work you know I wasn't sure going into this race whether it was 100% work and doing it at the pit stop last was around 15 seconds so with 15 seconds to work with if you've got the super soft tires on you're going into the pits at this you know when they go in the pits you're going to be as if anything ahead of other drivers and equal to the super soft runners so i kind of knew that i'd have at least 15 seconds to work with on you know for five laps that's what i based my um, judgment of you know can i make this strategy work and i just decided it was worth the risk because I was expecting, to be honest, a few more drivers to go for the no-stop strategy. And obviously, you know, starting on the soft tyres or the medium tyres and go for the no-stop strategy and maybe hold up some of the runners that are doing the pit stop. But it didn't really work out like that, as you can see now. He's starting to gain on me, but so far he's not gained a massive amount. He's definitely gaining on me at a, you know, a reasonably fast rate. It's going to be so close this when we get to the finishing line whether he's going to be able to make his strategy work or my strategy you know which strategy is going to be the strategy that works and you can see the tires look at the tires already now they're starting to feel a little bit worn now but let's have a little look at the lap time as we go over the start finishing line it's going to be a 1 minute 47.1 so 2.3 seconds or two point, just over two seconds off of the personal best of mine in the race so still that's within 
what I needed. I knew that I could afford to lose three seconds a lap, um, and if I lose three seconds a lap, I should still get the win. So at the moment, I'm giving myself the buffer for the last final lap when the tyres are going to be really struggling. There's another driver goes in the pits there on lap eight, obviously decided that he cannot make the no stop strategy. A very strange decision to do that at the um, start of lap eight because you've got three laps to go. And the pit stop loss is 15 seconds. The fuel was not a factor in this race. You had plenty of fuel to get to the end. So um, really a bit confused, to be honest, because you're not going to be five seconds a lap faster than worn tyres, pretty much no matter what. I mean, depending on how worn they were, but I'd be amazed if medium tyres going in the pits, you'd be losing five seconds to put a fresh set of super soft tyres on. I may be wrong, but whatever the strategy there was. Maybe he had damage, picked up some damage somewhere and the car was undrivable, well, that's the other, um, that could be the reason why he's gone in the pits, obviously. So you can see now, still holding on to the lead in this race as we come to the end of lap um, eight. Going, this was a sector where the risk was, but this is another reason why I kind of chose the super soft tyre, because with the super soft tyre through there, the car was very stable, it didn't slide, it had a lot of grip through that section, and that's the worrying section where the most risk came from. And with the medium tyres, I found that doing that section, the car slid around a lot. It was sliding on the front, it was sliding on the rear. And trying to do a no-stop no -stop strategy on the medium tyres wouldn't have worked because the tyres were going quicker for me. They were wearing out quicker because obviously you're sliding around a lot more on the medium tyres than you would be on the super soft tyres. Whereas driving smooth on the super soft tyres tended to preserve them because you had the grip. You wasn't sliding the front end, you wasn't sliding the rear end. And that's where I think the strategy worked at this track because obviously it wasn't a lot of fast corners. The, the main place you lost time on at this track with the strategy that I was running was after we go through the first sector split, the really fast left and the fast um, right hand corner, it was starting to understeer a fair amount through them corners. And that's where I was going to lose the times as we come up the hill now. This is where I'm talking about going up the hill through sector one and then this really fast left hand corner. But you can see I start pretty much lifting very early I'm trying to really make sure I don't make any mistakes and look how early I lift just trying to make sure I clip the apex of that corner enabling me then to get on the power up the hill because if I don't carry the speed up the hill this is where he's going to make a lot of gains on me but managing to carry okay speed all the way up the hill then and still managing to keep the lap times and the sector times within what I needed to do and so far everything is going really well but look at the, the right the, sorry the left front tire is looking extremely worn that is the tire that is going to really affect me in this race as we come to the last few laps um we've just got to try and hold on i just had to hold on hope that he wasn't going to get faster but the one thing if he was losing pace on the first stint with the super soft tires he's going to then start losing pace on obviously lap four and five so it's what you have to take into account as well when thinking about the strategy and this is why i'm glad i had a bit more time to work on my strategy this time because obviously the last round i went in no strategy idea had no clue went on the wrong tires and got totally destroyed um unfortunately i think if i would have known about you know had more time to work on the strategy like i have for this race took a bit of time to learn it as we go the line just 3.2 seconds off the lead pretty much the, the lap time that i needed and now i've got the final lap of over four seconds to lose you can see this strategy is really working out um, but like i said i think if i would have had the time to do it in the last track in the last round with the cayman i would have fared a lot better in that race but i'm showing now in this race that obviously if you've got the time to work on strategy it really does pay off and actually i think i told super gt about this this strategy but i don't think he ran it i'm pretty sure that he, he, he chose not to run this strategy whether it, um, he should have done it all depends obviously with the pad it may have been a little bit more um, aggressive when putting the steering inputs in so maybe it wouldn't have worked on the pad I'm not too sure but so far for me it's really working out as you can see now I, I wasn't actually panicking at this point you can see he's over three seconds there three seconds behind under three seconds now but we've got half a lap to go so I was just take, taking it fairly smooth trying not to make any errors just keeping it to the apexes we now run on board with Peter and look at the gap he's, I've got over him and I've only got really one real braking zone to go so he's obviously pushing really hard he can see me struggling he can see the understeer i've got but he just hasn't got enough corners to make this work and this is why the 10 laps was perfect for me because it enabled me to run this strategy of doing the no stop as you see going through this section i made sure i really took it easy through there i didn't push too hard didn't carry a massive amount of speed but i had the time to lose you can see still two seconds on the lead so going into the final corner i took it nice and easy 
I've got plenty of time to work with. And in the end, this has been fairly comfortable. He, may have, he was obviously getting closer towards the end. But it's been a comfortable um, win, really, when you actually look at, you know, 1.5 seconds I had to lose. And I took the last corner really easily. And go over the line with a comfortable and really happy with that. You see, weaving over to the right side. And take a very, very good win in that race. I'm really happy with that. Um, pretty much drove the perfect race. The only real worry was the starting instant where I obviously lost the places. After that, I didn't really make any errors. Kept it to the pace I needed. Kept the lap deltas exactly where I wanted. Um, the tyres were re really good up to pretty much the end of lap 8. I felt there was plenty of grip there. But then lap 9 started to fade off. And then lap 10 was a lap they were obviously gone. They had nothing left in them. But I didn't really need them at that point. I built up enough of a lead. And we take the win there with a reasonable time overall and some really solid points as well. I managed to pick up some good. Look how, also, you'll notice how far ahead we was of everyone else. You can see the other nose stopper came P4. V, um, VP Doffer over 20 seconds behind in the next Porsche. So a real comfortable win. I think um, Slent would have been up there as well. I, I, how close he would have been. It would have been very good battle. I think he would have been right up there with P2. And maybe would have put me under more pressure towards the end if he was on a different strategy. Whether he was on the same strategy as me, no, I, I really don't know. Um, possibly he was. But managing to pick up 2,500 points with that win. And the big, the biggest points I've got so far in this off-season, off exhibition season for the Manufacturers Championship. And that actually bumps my score up quite a bit in this. Because the, ra the races haven't really been going my way so far in this off-season. So... Luckily, some big points there. And the next round, hopefully, will be another big point round for myself because it's one of my favourite tracks. So far, I'm at P1 in the top 10 stars for the FIA manufacturers at Nürburgring. Um, obviously, using the soft tyres for the qualifying. I really don't know the strategy again for that. Haven't tested it yet. I will test that out, though, and try and make sure that I know what strategy to run. As we're going to go through the highlights now, of the start of the races, you see P1 there gets past me... Um, quite easily because of the gears that it started me on and then Slent tried to go up the inside a little bit of contact but no harm done and then um, V Cristiano comes up the outside and nearly spins me there where he's obviously got a massive momentum not his fault that's just the momentum that he was carrying through the corner but having a little look here again all three cars trying to go through turn one nearly coming into contact with each other but somehow getting through that without any damage um, no one really losing control, nearly lost control, nearly took out V Cristiano, but just about managed to save the rear of the car and held on to P2. And in the end, take the win with a really solid performance. So thoroughly happy with that. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, quite a surprising tactic. I think a lot of people didn't even think about using the super softs all the way to the finish but obviously i tested it out and thought it would work and it 100 did so some real nice points there anyway hope you enjoyed that video make sure you sub the channel if you haven't already subbed and um, click that notification button so you don't miss any future videos and i'll be back very soon thanks again for watching everyone